Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a black Labrador in pastels. Now the first thing that I like to do is get the eye drawn in. This here obviously is where the main expression of that animal stems from so I do want to make sure that I've got that right before I start working on any of the fur. I'm really paying attention to the way that the lights are, the shading in the eye, the highlights, the reflections, all of that comes into account. Now at the moment here I got a little sidetracked and forgot to add the highlight at the top of the eye. I do come in and add that later on. So onto the fur itself. Now as you can see the first thing is here I am breaking it up into small sections. This is my preferred way of working because I feel that it stops myself from becoming overwhelmed. If I'm working on individual layers for the entire subject I also find it's easy to rush through really important stages of that portrait. So my preference is to work in small sections. Now the one thing that's going to be very obvious as I continue to layer here is how important it is to build up the layers gradually. I am working with very dark base layers and I'm building up my values from there. What I don't want to do is put in my dark layer and then jump to my brightest highlight. If I do that I'm going to end up with fur that looks very flat and two dimensional. So as I'm often asked quite a lot of questions about how to draw black fur realistically, I do have a selection of tutorials that are available on my Patreon channel of different animals that show various techniques in order to get that type of texture right. So whether or not it's feathers, fur, it's all about the layering process and how we use those pencils. So if those or any of my other in-depth tutorials are of interest, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Now as I continue to work here, I'm really focusing now on my pencil technique. So I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But one of the things I talk about there is the importance of that pencil technique, the way that we're moving the pencil. So there are three main things that we need to be focusing on. Fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. Now all of these things are going to be very dependent on the animal that we're drawing. So how we use our pencil to draw a black Labrador are going to be very different to how we would potentially draw a Newfoundland. So we need to be making sure that we're adjusting those pencil strokes accordingly. Now the fur direction, it follows the underlying bone and muscular structure. So for instance on the ear here, the way that that curves over the structures from how it's sit and positioned on the side of the face is going to make that fur change direction in quite a few ways. So I want to be making sure that I focus on where that fur direction starts and where it finishes. Now for instance, take around the eye. If I don't get the fur direction right with how it slopes down towards the ear, I'm not going to replicate the shape of the eye socket and therefore ultimately it's not going to resemble that dog as it should. So the fur direction is something that I always pay very close attention to right from those initial layers. Now the other thing there is the length of those pencil strokes. So again, if I make my pencil strokes too long here, I will end up with a longer coated Labrador, which obviously isn't a thing. So we do need to be making sure that we've paid very, very close attention to how long the fur is in that one section that we're working on. Now, for instance, the fur on the bridge of the nose of a Labrador is shorter than on the ears or the chest. So we do need to be making sure that even on that one breed, that one dog that we're drawing, that we are studying the fur direction, the fur length, for that one area that we are currently working on. We don't want to be using the same length of pencil strokes from start to finish. So that then leaves the thickness of our pencil strokes. Now that is determined by a couple of factors. The first is how sharp that lead is. The other is how much pressure we're applying to the pencil. So if we apply too much pressure to the pencil when working with pastels, we will have a tendency to get a thicker line and that obviously isn't what we want for a breed like this. Labradors have quite fine hair, so we want to be making sure that we're replicating that. Now, all three of these pencil techniques, the fur direction, fur length, and the fur thickness, are something that every single one of those is just as important, because if they're not right, just one of those things, it will affect and change what that animal looks like. Now, when we're working with pet portraits, that's obviously something that's going to potentially adjust what that animal, what that person's pet, is to them so we need to be paying very close attention to it. Now for my Patreon channel I do like to focus on the pet portrait side of things as much as the wildlife subjects. So I have a wide variety of dog, cat and horse tutorials for Patreon members who may want to take on commissions of their own, who want to then implement the tips and techniques that I share in those real-time tutorials in their own work. 
So if there is a specific dog breed or any animal really that you would like to see featured in a tutorial here on YouTube, then do let me know in the comments below and I'm more than happy to get it added to my list. Now in regards to the fur direction, the side of the face here is one area where it changes direction very quickly. If we don't get the curve right here, we can actually make it look like the animal has some kind of lump on the side of its face, which is obviously something we need to pay very close attention to. Here, how it slopes away from the nose and then down towards the cheek, that there is a very drastic change of direction. So I really want to make sure that I am studying those, the, the reference photo, I'm studying how I should be moving that pencil right from this first layer where I begin to map that in. You can also see here how the highlights and shadows are following where the main directional change of that fur occurs. So underneath the eye, for example, is a lighter section and then it's followed on by a shadow. Those there are indicating at the lower section of that eye socket where it then attaches to the cheek. This is building up the overall shape of that dog's face. Now onto the nose and I've got quite a few tutorials here on YouTube that show various different noses, the different colours, so I'll pop a couple of those in the description below as well. Now here, just like when I work on the fur, I was mapping in the main lights and darks, but the first priority when I draw noses is I want to be making sure that the nostril placement is accurate, the size of the nostrils is also right, because it's very obvious if they're wrong. Even if someone doesn't have a copy of the reference photo, they can normally tell if the nose isn't right and it's usually to do with the nostril placement. So I want to be making sure that I've mapped that in first and I've got that right. After then, I can build up the area of the mouth around the nose. Now the one area here that I'm gonna be focusing on is the length of my pencil strokes. The fur in this area is shorter than the rest of the face, especially right underneath the nose itself. As I come across to the area that I'm currently mapping in here, that's where the fur starts to get a little longer. But I need to be making sure that I've got that variation on this part of the mouth. One of my favourite parts of any portrait, regardless of the medium that I'm working in, is adding in the whiskers. But it's very tempting to add them in too early on. So what I don't want to do is get the base foundation built up like what I've got here, and then add in those whiskers now. I need to leave those whiskers until the very end. Now what I'll personally do is actually get an entire portrait done and the whiskers are the very last thing to go on and then I will sign the portrait. I may then put the portrait away for a day or two and look at it with fresh eyes, make sure there's no other alterations that I need to make, but in terms of the bulk of that portrait, I get that done before I even think about adding any whiskers. Now the one thing that is important about whiskers is if the dog has any that come out from the tops of their eyebrows, then it's important to add those in as well. Some breeds can also get a couple of them coming out on the side of their cheeks, so again, that makes that pet unique. You wanna be adding in any of those whiskers that are seen on the reference photo. Now, when it comes to drawing the actual mouth area, the gums and the teeth, here, again, just like the fur, the contrast plays a huge role. So you can see how bright the teeth are and how dark the gums are. Now, of course, it's gonna affect and, and vary depending on the lighting. If that mouth portion is in shadow, everything there is gonna be a little bit darker, but you do still want to be focusing on your values. Now, the gum section of any portrait can actually be quite overwhelming. There is a lot of shapes. There are a lot of reflections that are going on here. I'm using a combination of colors. I'm bringing in some magentas, some pinks here, some purple colors to help build up those values and additional depth. But it's the lights and the darks here that make this part of the mouth, the face, look wet, which is exactly what we want to do. So now that I've got that foundation in place, you can see I'm coming back in with my lighter values to reinforce those highlights. Now, once I was happy with that, that's when I can start working on the tongue. Now, if at this point I felt like I needed to add more of that wetter look to the mouth, then all I would need to do is make my darks darker or my highlights brighter or maybe even both. Once you've darkened up the layer, you can sometimes then make your highlights look lighter. So that would be the case with anything. So if you're working on fur or even a reflection in the eye and you've used your brightest colours and you feel like they should be showing up, it's usually then an issue of what's next to it isn't dark enough. So if you darken that up, you'll make your highlights look brighter. Now when drawing tongues, just like when we work on the fur, it's all about the layers and how we build those up. 
So I don't want to be starting off with just one layer of pink and then adding in detail straight on the top. You also want to be making sure that you're curving the shadows and the highlights at the right point. If you look at the highlight here on the center of the tongue that I'm currently adding in now, that is going to be in the position of where the canine teeth are, the big teeth at the front. This is what's making that tongue look like it's curved over that surface and then draping over the front part of the chin. So if I get that curve, the highlight position there wrong, I'm going to make the tongue look really long, which therefore makes the mouth look long in general. So all of these things can actually play a massive part in the overall portrait. Now in terms of the colour that I used here, it is overly, you know, more of a warm colour. So I've used more of my standard pinks and a few of those purples. But in some cases, depending on the light source, the reference photograph, some of those tongues are going to have far more of a darker or cooler look to them. So you're going to need to bring some more purples or even some blues there as well. Now the very last part of the Black Labrador's portrait was of course the chest. Now most of the chest here was covered up by the dog in front and I will eventually have a video of this Jack Russell also available here on YouTube. And the chest portion of this photograph was actually really quite dark so there wasn't too many lighter layers that I needed to add here. But that being said, look at how I'm still paying attention to the mid-tones. The mid-tones here and how I'm moving that pencil to follow the fur direction are still meaning that this looks realistic even though there aren't a huge number of highlights here. Now I do find how we blend or soften the lower part of the faded chest section of the portrait can really make a huge difference to how balanced that portrait looks. I personally don't like to have any harsh edges where the dog just almost comes to a stop. I do like to fade that out which is as you can see here I'm using a variety of tools to achieve that softness. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it. If you could give it a like and a thumbs up, it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be really, really grateful. I also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. As I've mentioned earlier, if you are interested in drawing along to any of my real-time tutorials on Patreon, then I'll link that in the description below, along with my Patreon library, so you can see a complete list of all tutorials that are available there when you sign up. Now, the wonderful thing about Patreon is it's really flexible. You can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time. But if you do have any questions about that or any art-related questions, really, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching.